them with leading a team and with the idea of leadership you know if you if you look at like leading it's this balance between like having a diversity of thought but at the same time like showing you have certainty as a leader and i guess when you're when you're looking at that how have you found you know been you've been able to keep that balance of you know you know maintaining certainty right so people want to follow you but at the same time consulting that diversity of thought so talking about following and getting people to collectively come together to go after what i did in that 90 day example about the perfect push up is that i painted an end result mm -hmm. i gave them a story that they could learn and perhaps get a reason to believe in now they have to start to believe in me and very quickly we being the judgment making machines that we all are are going to be looking for reasons to support the judgment should i believe in him or not yep and that's where it becomes so critical as a leader to be so consistent with doing what you say you're going to do and how you treat others and so when these hard times come you say look i know you joined this company and you thought we were going this way but We've got some new information. We're going to make a pivot and we're going to go across that ocean over there. It's going to take a while and we're not going to be able to see it right away, but I want you to believe in what this outcome could represent. When you as a leader can do that, then along your journey, you want to make sure you're offering opportunities where the diversity of thought can come in and help you streamline that journey to get to the new place. How do you, I guess, cultivate kind of a, like a, a team growth mentality, right? Like not let it become stale. Like how, how do you as a leader cultivate that? It has to start, the way I do it is it starts with me. Mm -hmm. And the more you can be comfortable at knowing all the things you're terrible at and being able to say, hey, I am relying on you and I'll pick on one of these areas. I am terrible with Excel spreadsheets. Matter of fact, they give me hives. Like the idea of even doing a pivot table and that sort of thing is just, oh, I, I don't even know where to start. I, I'm laughing because we have uh, Lori. She's actually in the accounting part of my company and she's like the spreadsheet wizard. So whenever everybody has a problem, they just email Lori and she's like, oh, boom, 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 boom. I fixed it. I'm like, okay, good. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Right? I mean, could you imagine if you do that? It would take me days and I wouldn't get it right. I'd mess something else up along the way but you honor that person as yeah. an example Lori thank you for doing that by the way we're really relying on you you are on point and by that point Lori would know oh I really am on point because Alden's not going to fix this he is not going to check on this and Lori I'm expecting you to stay up to date on this we will fund whatever extra education you need when they go into the virtual world of excel spreadsheets and you're wearing goggles whatever ends up happening you become part of the cell yeah. but part of that is calling out and calling them and saying that's your superpower and and i can see that in you and i want to foster that in you go get them more excited about it right they'll pull you along once you've got the right people in the right seats They'll be like, hey, I want to learn more about that. Mm -hmm. But a key piece is you being able to understand what are the things that are really passionate about them? What are they really good at? And how do they like to stay in their zone of genius? And then help them stay there all the time.